Well, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, City Council, thank you so much for this uh, opportunity. This is a, uh, a special uh, council meeting of the City of Sioux Falls. Today is Tuesday, March 28th, and certainly want to welcome everybody in the crowd, as well as everybody that's watching on, on TV today. Uh, we will start the special meeting by introducing you to your City Council. Council Members Erickson, Here. Erpenbach. Here. Kiley. Here. Neitzert. Here. Rolfing. Selberg here star present Staley here Thank you very much. Uh, we will lead this meeting with an invocation and uh, we're very very fortunate to have pastor George Varney of the wonders evangelist evangelistic ministries um, Pastor Varney has been with us here in, in America or in Sioux Falls since 2013 He's from Moruvia, Liberia and uh, again, Pastor Varney, thank you for leading us in that invocation and that prayer. We appreciate it. What we'd ask is that you stand, uh, remain standing for the invocation, and then please stand for our Pledge of Allegiance as well. Uh, Pastor Varney. We're going to read from the Gospel that call into St. John chapter 9, 1 through 5. And it says, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his breath. And a disciple asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered and said, Neither had this man nor his parents, but that the words of the Lord should be made manifest in him. For I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when the man cannot see. As long as I am in the word, I am the light of the word. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this is the day that you've made that we rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord, for this important program. Into thy hands we commit the major and his able staffs. We commit the community and the inhabitants. We pray, Lord, for the manifestation of your power during this time. That, Lord, through you, things will go on so fine with us. The blood that you share on the cross of Calvary, that redemptive blood, Lord, we pray that you spill it over so falls. That, Lord, peace everlasting we enjoy as we live as one people. We want to thank you, Lord. We bless you so much, O oh God. Your word declares, Lord, can two walk except they agreed. Those that you have selected, Lord, to work with the major, we pray, O oh Lord, for sound mind understanding. The heart, O oh Lord, that will lead them to agree so that massive development will break loose in the city in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for everything you are doing. We say, Lord, to you and only you be glory. We want to thank you. We bless you. For in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance. Councilors and uh, City of Sioux Falls, uh, thanks again for this opportunity to uh, give you an update on what I believe is the state of our city uh, at this time. And, and I'm going to just uh, touch a little bit. Uh, I had a, had a recent meeting with uh, Councilor Christine Erickson. Uh, the interaction that I had with uh, Councilor Erickson, uh, I, it was great. Um, at the end of the conversation, Councillor Erickson uh, kind of reached out to me and she said, you know, Mayor, um, you've got about 14 months to serve. Um, and I wonder if there's a way that, you know, we could work together uh, as, as a council uh, or as leaders uh, to tackle some of the things in your remaining months as, as the mayor. Um, I tell you, I, I really appreciated the offer. Um, and that's going to set the stage today. Um, and I want to let the council know uh, that probably the easiest thing I could have done here today was just talk about all the accolades, all the good things that are going on in Sioux Falls. But I think Councilor Erickson was spot on uh, when she said, you know, what, what can we do together 
uh, to take this city to an even higher level of, of performance. Sioux Falls, we are doing well. But guess what? We're capable of even more. Um, you bet. Uh, we've got national accolades. About once every two weeks, there's something new that's touted about our great city. I'm not going to go through them all. Uh, but again, it would be just so easy just to sit here and touch on all the grand things going on. I'm going to catch some of you really off guard today. Uh, I'm hoping to spend even more time on ways that we can make the city better than on the, uh, the accolades that we are receiving. Uh, we are the ninth best run city in America, according to Wallet Hub. We are the eighth best city in America where residents have those healthy finances. This is a city, this is a state where not only government should run well, but we want our families and our businesses and our churches to run well at the same time. We do have rock solid financial management here in, in the city of Sioux Falls. We actually care about things like, uh, like our piggy bank. Uh, in this city, you have to have a 25% operating reserve level. Well, we do that here, and we're continuing to do that here. Um, at the same time, I need Sioux Falls and this council to be aware that I don't know if we would have hit that reserve target this year if not for the aggressive efforts of people like Tracy Turback, our finance team, the department heads, and others. Uh, way back in April, about a year ago today, we rang the bell that our sales tax revenues were softening. We immediately implemented changes to our budget so that we would stay within that budget uh, reserve level that, that, that we wanted. Um, it's tough, but it's necessary. Debt. You know, we are a community that uh, we really do care about, about debt. Uh, and I want to make sure that everyone understands that our debt remains very, very manageable. Uh, you can see up on, on the screen above you that, yes, we have invested our, in our community. We have borrowed some funds over the years, uh, uh, especially since I have been your mayor, whether it be you know, the events center, uh, the city administration building, uh, whether it be infrastructure projects and more. Uh, we are tackling some big, big projects in, in our city. But at the same time, Sioux Falls, at the same time, Council, we are very, very aggressively paying off debt in our great city. All right, prove that, Mayor. Let's just look at something here. Uh, our per capita debt uh, just continues to drop. It's a drop. Look at where we're at in comparison to other communities that uh, are aggressively trying to compete with Sioux Falls. Um, our quality of life is just doing great things. We are repairing infrastructure at the highest level. We're keeping our citizens safe. We're doing all these grand things, and yet our per capita debt continues to drop. Those in Sioux Falls that readily tout that our debt is out of control we're just flat out not telling you the truth. It's not true. It's very controlled, it's very prudent, and we're really receiving solid returns on those investments that we have made. When I was elected mayor, uh, we had a debt per capita uh, of about $1,773. When I'm done being your mayor, uh, it is going to increase to $1,929. Our debt per capita over eight years, even with all of the incredible things that we've tackled as a city, it's going to increase $156. We've come so far in this town. The investments have been worth it. The sacrifices have been worth it, not only for this generation, but for generations to come. One of the hardest things that, these, that this council has to do is they have to look at neighbors time and time again, whether it be in church, whether it be in the grocery store, whatever it would be, and there's times where they have to look at them and say, you know what? Increasing fees and increasing rates is the right thing to do, and we've done it. I'm proud of this council. 
They've done it time and time again, whether it be water and sewer, electricity rates, land, landfill fees, building permit fees, aquatics fees, transit fares, whatever it would be. They've tackled the topic of fares and fees. Because here's the question, Sioux Falls, who should ultimately pay for programs and services? Those who use them or general taxpayers? Not addressing fees would be irresponsible thing to do. This council's done it. We do need to keep, it, keep up with costs, especially with things like utilities uh, and, and infrastructure. Folks, and if you ever hear the word free in government, remember, there is no such thing as free in government. Our city's infrastructure has come a long way. Um, you know, I, I wish that I could take everyone in Sioux Falls on, on a road trip. I really do. I'd love to take them all over the Midwest, places where they get snow and wind and ice and rain, because I'd love to compare our roads with theirs. You know, we just had a, 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 an impartial third party. They came in to evaluate every single mile of road in our city. And here's what they said. Uh, they said that our roads are better than most, not only in the Midwest, but in across America. Sure, we still have some work to do, Council. About 4% of our roads are in poor or very poor condition. 4%. The goal that they outlined was, they said, if you can be anywhere around 12% or less, you're doing very, very well. We're at four. Now, there certainly have some good things going on, but Council, as I promised, I want to talk about the things that we need to also focus on to make our city even better. Counselors, especially the new ones, don't forget the lessons learned of some of these monster things that just nailed us, such as I was just elected mayor, and all of a sudden we had a monster sanitary sewer line collapse up by the prison. It was back in 2010. That was so unbelievably expensive, but more importantly, it was one of the most frightening things that we've ever taken on in the city of Sioux Falls. Did we wait too late to repair sanitary sewer lines? After we started to take pictures of all of the, uh, the sewer lines, we found all kinds of places that needed repair, and we've done it. The 12th Street Bridge Project, okay? Again, we're in this uh, mode. We're trying to squeeze blood from the taxpayer turnip. We are. We're trying to make things last as long as we possibly can. But some of these things, in that effort, um, we're ultimately finding maybe we're waiting just a bit too long. Uh, the 12th Street Bridge Project, we had no other choice but to tackle that thing head on, and we did. The Louise Avenue replacement, is that one that maybe we should have tackled last year or the year before? Probably. Probably. But again, you've got our finance team, your public works team, they're doing everything that they can to maximize your taxpayer dollar. But when we do tackle them, they're unbelievably expensive. And counselors, those are some of those things that we have to be aware of. What's coming up around the bend that's gonna be unbelievably expensive, and then how are we gonna prioritize our dollars to meet those needs? Weather-related emergencies, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but we got April coming around the bend tomorrow. Remember the April ice storm? Well, we had plenty of funds ready to tackle that one. But also we've had issues like flood. We've talked about flooding in Sioux Falls. Well, now we're tackling things that are very, very expensive in the effort to, to, to keep us safe. I talked about softening sales tax revenues. It's so much fun to be the mayor, it's so much fun to be the counselor, it's so much fun to be in public service when you don't have to worry about money. We worry about money every day here. It's our role. And it's even tougher when uh, you've got challenges when it comes to how you fund government. Um, counselors, there's some really tough conversations lying ahead. Get ready. And you are, you and I, and so many others, we're going to have to pick winners and losers when it comes to distributing those taxpayer dollars. You know what? Mayor Munson, during his final years as mayor, especially his last one, he didn't, he didn't back away from the challenges that, that lied ahead at the end of his term. I won't either. Counselors saying no or no longer 
is incredibly difficult. But we have to do it. They are softening these sales tax revenues. They are. There's really three reasons for it. Uh, online sales, that's, that's a big deal. Nationally, online sales grew 15% in 2016 over 2015. Total retail sales only grew by 3%. So what does that mean? More and more people are using the internet to buy stuff. And when they buy stuff on the internet, the state of South Dakota and the city of Sioux Falls is getting walloped time and time again. The ag economy. Our foundation is Ag Sioux Falls, and when the farmers and ranchers in small towns of South Dakota, when they're struggling or when they get cautious, that impacts us in a big, big way. Get ready for this. In 2011, the South Dakota farm and ranch income was $3.8 billion. In 2016, it's estimated to be nine, uh, about uh, uh, less than uh, one billion. It's been cut by two thirds. That's impacting Sioux Falls. Inflation, you know, when, when, when there's no inflation, you usually look at that as, as a good thing. However, remember too, those are dollars, those inflationary increases are not coming in to, to Sioux Falls. All right, media, uh, all right, Sioux Falls, get ready for the scoop, okay? You see the number up there? It says 2.5%. That's where we're at right now. Uh, council, media, Sioux Falls, we were very, very conservative in our projections in last year's plan. We had projected a drop to 4%. We're at 2.5% Sioux Falls. And right now, the city of Sioux Falls is managing to that 2.5%. We are. We've already made the adjustments, the cuts, that are going to keep us at that 2.5% growth level from now until the end of the year. And we're prepared for more if necessary. Then to throw on top of it, um, you know, the reality is, is that folks, you know, if we want a balanced federal government, if we want a balanced state government, uh, if we want to move dollars from X to Y, uh, and you're hearing that nationally and certainly across South Dakota, uh, at the same time you're hearing about budget cuts. Council, here's some reality, and that's why that yellow thing is flashing up above you right now. Um, there are threats of federal and state budget cuts, and you have to understand those dollars are flowing into Sioux Falls in the amount of about $13 million in federal funds alone. Now, if those cuts happen, uh, and there's a good chance that they will, those $13 million in cuts are going to impact affordable housing, public health, transit, public safety, and transportation. We are going to need to learn more and more in the city of Sioux Falls and the state of South Dakota to take care of ourselves. Now, uh, again, some accolades. Uh, just a recent one that came out from the Wall Street Journal uh, shows that uh, Sioux Falls, we're, we're doing something well here. Um, fifth most affordable place to live. And, and again, that's getting noticed. Uh, we've had four straight record-breaking years of construction, and uh, already since September of 2016, we've got another $70 million in building permit valuation that's ready for the floodplain uh, that, that we just tackled as a city. We're building homes like crazy in this city, more homes than we've ever done before. In fact, last year, 2,647 new housing units were, were built in Sioux Falls. We, at the same time that we're growing and flourishing and we're vibrant, at the same time, we're putting in more and more work to make sure that our good neighbors uh, reap the rewards of being good neighbors and that our bad neighbors, we hold them accountable too. That's a big deal. Uh, we're not messing around when it comes to how we want people to follow the codes and the policies of, of this city. Uh, when we do it, 90% of the time, it works out incredibly well. Sioux Falls responds. Our citizens respond. 
uh, when we're holding them accountable. One thing that folks have to understand, and, and, and I think they're getting a better, better flavor for it, is that also as part of that role is to ensure that we have safe, sanitary, and decent housing. That is our minimum standard. But what's happening in Sioux Falls? Well, we do have some unintended consequences of this growth, uh, of this strength. And that is affordable housing challenges during my term as your mayor, one of the unintended consequences of this growth, of this vibrancy, of this confidence, is that affordable housing challenges have even gotten worse. They have. What's, what's going on? Well, we've got builders and dreamers and investors. What they're doing is they're taking these older properties that used to be deemed affordable, and now they're repairing them, or maybe they're even replacing them with more expensive uh, options for people to live. So what does that do to the people that, that need affordable housing? They're really challenged at the highest level, and the numbers prove it out. I mean, even though we have had more city funding than we've ever had as a city, it's never been higher, the issues continue to grow. We've got 2,160 households that are on the waiting list for subsidized housing programs. And imagine this, you can be on the list, but it takes three years on average before you actually get some help. We are the second best small city in America for business and careers. We are the fourth best city in jobs uh, when it comes to jobs in, in America. Again, great things, a great problem to have. Uh, look at our unemployment rate. Uh, one of the lowest that it's ever been here in, South Dakota, or in Sioux Falls during the months of January and, and February. Again, something to, to celebrate. Uh, certainly, uh, I'm excited about it. We are creating a bevy of good jobs. In fact, in 2016 alone, we created 3,900 jobs in Sioux Falls alone. People across America, if you're looking for a great place to live, and you want a good job, Sioux Falls is the place to do it. However, at the same time, uh, whether it be Forward Sioux Falls, Sioux Falls Development, the Community Development Office, the Chamber of Commerce, and yes, this council and this mayor, we also know that one of the real challenges that we have in this city is workforce recruitment and development. Um, it, it really is a challenge. With all those job openings, you know, what are we gonna rely on? Well, the way that we used to do it with, uh, you know, relying on farmers and, and ranchers and small town around uh, Sioux Falls, that, that's not working anymore. And the supply that we do have, as you can see, um, there's, there's really not a lot of hope in terms of meeting our workforce challenges with the, uh, the available labor supply that we have today. One of the biggest things, Council, that you're going to be hearing about over the next year or so are can we or should we uh, develop a community college or more community colleges in the city of Sioux Falls? So get ready, uh, more to come on that. We still have all these jobs. Yep, we've got a great un uh, unemployment rate. Yep, uh, we, a lot of confidence, a lot of people investing here. But at the same time, we are a town that does never, we never rest on our laurels when it comes to job creation or job development. Council, I think the conversation that we're going to have to have over the next year or two is that, yeah, jobs are being created. We want to keep this community growing. We want to keep our economy sound. But in our effort to compete for more and more jobs and better jobs, what should we focus on? Well, I think Councilor Erpenbach uh, is someone who would, who, would, who would agree with this. Not only do we need jobs, we need good jobs. We need jobs that uh, have solid pay, very, very competitive benefits, provide a really good uh, place to work. They'll have a positive impact on the quality of our life here in Sioux Falls. And at the same time, they won't over overrun our social service agencies, our nonprofits, or impact crime in the city of Sioux Falls. We're actually a happy city. Uh, according to Zipia, we're the fourth happiest city in America. 
Wallet Hub, they, they, they disagree a little bit. Uh, they think we're the fifth happiest city uh, to live in America. Either way, we'll take it. We'll take it. And I think we've earned it. Uh, you know, even with the snow, even with the wind, even with the rain, uh, we're still happy. Um, and if you went to the, uh, uh, the recent NCAA tournament uh, that was just held here where we had eight teams from all across America, six of the eight teams, they were, they were from cities that were a thousand miles or more away from the great city of Sioux Falls. Talk to anyone who attended. They can't believe how happy we are here. Uh, they want to know what's causing it. Uh, this South Dakota nice is real. Uh, thank you, Sioux Falls, uh, for making that happen and for being such a great ambassador. Uh, that, that word is catching on. Uh, we had more city move into the, we had more people move into the city of Sioux Falls last year than we've ever had in our history. Uh, Jason Ball was one of them. Thanks, Jason, for joining our team. Um, listen to this. Since I've been your mayor, we've added the city of Watertown. I'm a Yankton boy. Uh, I used to always look at Watertown as one of the really, really big guys uh, that we would compete against. And uh, in seven years, we added the city of Watertown uh, on to Sioux Falls. Um, people want to be here. At the same time, we are really learning to embrace diversity. Because remember what I just got done talking about? Um, in the olden days, if we needed to grow, if we wanted to flourish, if we wanted to attract good people to work here, um, we did. We went to those farmers and those ranchers and those small towns across the Midwest. Now, we're having to think bigger, uh, not only across the Midwest, not only across America, but across the world. And look at the numbers. Right now, uh, about eight out of every ten of us is, is, is white. But look at our Sioux Falls public schools. 65% are white, 35% are minority. This city is changing, and we're embracing this diversity, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited about it. But at the same time, counselors, when people are moving here, not only from across the Midwest and across America, but they're moving here from across the world, they have different expectations. Uh, they, they focus on different things. They have different needs, different wants. One of those is public transportation. And uh, again, there's been some things that I certainly have been proud of as, uh, in terms of working with you as your mayor. But one place where I believe that uh, I, I've not made a, a positive impact is uh, in the area of public transportation. Um, because not only are people moving in here that demand it, but read any article about millennials. Millennials are demanding it. The active generation, we're the, one of the top five retirement communities in all of America, and the active generation, not only do they demand it, they rely on it. But here's some of the realities. We really haven't addressed this topic, not at the level that it needs. Uh, the demands are increasing, but to, let, let's just talk about some of the, the business aspects of public transportation in Sioux Falls. A fixed route cost per passenger trip in the city of Sioux Falls is $5.46. The revenue that we generate is about 62 cents. We, we recover about 10% of the expense when it comes to public transportation. Paratransit, it's even worse. The cost of a paratransit co uh, trip is over $30. The revenue we generate is about $2.28. We're recovering 7% of, uh, uh, of, of what we need to to uh, keep up with public transportation. And I don't, I don't know if you remember, but remember what I talked about when I uh, talked about budget cuts? Well, the state of South Dakota, they're not doing anything to support public transportation needs in Sioux Falls. They're not. But the federal government still is. But that's one of the things that they're looking at cutting. So at some point in time, Council, we're really going to need to address this. We are growing. Um, 
And uh, one of the things that uh, we've seen is that we're creating these islands. Well, two years ago, uh, there were 50 islands. Uh, and about three years ago, I put together a task force to address the annexation uh, issues of, of Sioux Falls. Uh, some of them were your, were your, were your partners here on, on the council. We worked feverishly to address the annexation uh, issue in Sioux Falls. We spent more time and effort on that than we did just about any other project. Now it's two years later, and there's 62 islands. How's that for success? Doesn't look too successful to me. The problem is only getting worse. And uh, Council, Councilor Erickson, you know, you in good faith said, Mayor, how can we help you? Um, I, this is an area where we're going to need your help. Uh, and it's going to be very, very unpopular and tough when you tackle it. Now, again, uh, uh, fourth best city in, uh, for families in America. Second best place for children in America. Love it. Our quality of life right now, I don't think it's ever been better. Uh, you know, you've got, for example, the Denny Sanford Premier Center that's just blowing away expectations. Uh, the brand new Midco Aquatics Center, just rave reviews. Uh, the Sanford Sports Complex is as evident by, by last weekend's Division II championships, bringing in tourism like crazy, whether it's hockey, whether it's tennis, whether it's basketball, whether it's football, it has become a tourism mecca that, uh, that Sanford Sports Complex, and yes, our parks and our bike trails and our libraries, they've never been better. And we're gonna keep it going. You know, we, uh, that, that Levitt Shell, that will become downtown's event center. Uh, and mark my words, uh, downtown, mark my words, Sioux Falls, you'll understand why I'm so excited about this one being in downtown Sioux Falls um, versus some other things. But even with our high quality of life, even with all the good things going on, even with the in insatiable demand for people to live here, there are still some things that are impacting our quality of life. Mayor Allender of Rapid City and Mayor Huther of Sioux Falls, for the very first time, we came together, uh, thanks to the support of the media, and we talked about meth, uh, th this drug that is really taking over uh, places like Volga and Trip and Eureka and Sioux Falls and Rapid City and all, every other city across America. Folks, you want to know what's increasing crime in your town? It's drugs. It's meth. It's opioids. It's prescription drugs. It's heroin. That's what's causing the drug problem and the, the crime problem in Sioux Falls. Uh, you know, what can we do about that? Well, we are going to stay ahead of it by investing in our police team, uh, by, by working with our state uh, agencies, our federal agencies. But, but folks, if you have a quick fix for, uh, for, for drug use in, in Sioux Falls and across America, let me know. Let me know. But we can sit here time and time again and talk about how uh, 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 crime is increasing in, in our city. There's one cause, and it's not people moving here it's not. It's not the insatiable demand for, uh, uh, for this project or that project. It's not. The reason that crime is on the rise, not only in every small town in South Dakota, in every big city in South Dakota, in every big city across America, it's drugs. It's meth. Sioux Falls, it's time to take some ownership of this. Start talking to your kids. Start talking to your grandkids. Sioux Falls Public Schools, Sioux Falls Private Schools, you need to make this high on your priority list of things to talk about so that you make sure that they don't ever try it for the first time because once they try it, they're hooked. That's how we can maybe address the problem of drugs in the city of Sioux Falls. It's time for all of us to take ownership of it. You do the crime, you are going to do the time in, in Sioux Falls. You know, we are blessed by a, by a great police team. Uh, we are. Look at our clearance rates. We do find, when, when people do, um, uh, do something bad in, in our city, uh, we do a really great job in terms, in terms of finding them. You know, so we do have some challenges. 
Um, uh, but this city, uh, thanks to the support of so many, remains a great place to live, work, and, and, and raise a family. Now a topic that uh, really nobody wants to talk about, uh, but I'm going to before I'm done being your, your mayor. Um, you know, let's talk a little bit about health care. Um, uh, the needs are only growing. And uh, thanks to the help of our community health team, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to meet the needs of, of that here in Sioux Falls. Um, 10 years ago, we were seeing about 9,000 patients a year. Now we're seeing about 13,000 patients a year. And it's not just their physical health, maybe more importantly, it's their mental health, their behavioral health. And uh, talk to our police team, talk to our fire team, talk to our health team, talk to our code enforcement team, talk to uh, anybody who works in city government. The, one of the biggest challenges, Council, that we face in this city is behavioral health, is mental health challenges. And they are growing and those, uh, uh, those needs are not being met uh, across Sioux Falls or South Dakota. Now, still a great place, uh, second place, uh, second best city in America for millennials, uh, as well as for the active generation. So whether you're young or old, we'll take you here and we'll make it worth your while. Where do they want to be? They, they both, both sets want to be in downtown. Look where we've come. In 2010, we were at about a 14% vacancy rates in terms of places to live, uh, Jason, here in Sioux Falls. Now it's less than 2%. Try to find a place to live in downtown Sioux Falls. It's almost impossible. Our vacancy rates, uh, we've come a long, long way. It's, it's, uh, it's a hot place to, to work as well. And then, yes, it's become the place to play. It's really a fun uh, place to, to be. And it's not happened on its own. It's been public investment. Uh, we've invested almost $60 in, in public funds since 2010 in our downtown. And last year alone, of course, those private investments um, really spurred on uh, downtown Sioux Falls. 23 new businesses in downtown last year alone, and there's more to come, whether it be Washington Square, the Jones Loss, our rail yard redevelopment, our new parking ramp, and so much more. But, Council, we now have 10 acres of land that the United States taxpayer paid a bunch of money for. And uh, so, you know, what is its potential? Well, right now, we've got six proposals that have already been submitted for some of that redevelopment. I would just encourage you to do it right versus fast. Uh, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for this city. And when I say lifetime, that doesn't mean 50 years or 80 years or 100 years, this investment is going to impact the lifetime of this city for 500 to 1,000 years, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Sioux Falls, we keep making the big time. The Wall Street Journal, top of the page, Sioux Falls prospers as other cities slump. Within the article, they talk about our city's population jumped 63% over the last 15 years. That's the fastest growth of any metro area of more than 50,000 people between Ohio and North Dakota. There's no going back, Sioux Falls. There's not. Um, we have wanted this. It's happening. And the word is spreading. And with it comes this attraction, this magnet as the place to be. Um, counselors, um, when we take on this role as public servants, it's our responsibility to leave things better than the way that we found them. Uh, and, you know, we could easily rest on our laurels, focusing on the accolades that we've received uh, as this city. But I think as Councilor Erickson expressed, uh, that, that working together, uh, we can make the city even stronger. Uh, I've outlined uh, some of those areas where I think we can, we can work together to make good things happen. Uh, city of Sioux Falls is going to need your help too, as well as I'll never forget the 1,200 plus city employees that we have and the mark that they made. On behalf of the City of Sioux Falls uh, City Council, I want to thank you for this opportunity. 
on letting you know where I believe the state of our city is uh, today. Thank you all and make it a great day. Council, with your permission, uh, a, a motion to adjourn. There's been a motion to adjourn. It has been seconded. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? This State of the City address is adjourned. Take care, Sioux Falls.